hey, I'm Jez, and or Impulx, and this will be a tutorial on doing FM synthesis on the M8 Tracker by Dirty Wave. Um, so this should be useful if you have an M8 device or using the headless version and you heard lots of cool FM sounds and you don't know how on earth to start making FM sounds. So we're going to start super basic and work from the beginning. Um, so FM synthesis is about taking a wave and then modulating it. So we're going to start with a sine wave. As you can see, I have a basic sine wave here. Um, if I go up and up to you, you should be able to see it a bit more clearly. Um, you can see our beautiful, perfect sine wave here. Uh, and we have a spectrum analyzer. And we can see it's pretty much just one peak, um, one peak, uh, if you can see my mouse, here, uh, which is the note that I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing a D sharp 5, and I'm choosing the D sharp 5 simply because uh, on the M8, if you're playing a D sharp, it doesn't move. If I play a D, it will sort of move side to side. Um, but yeah, D sharp seems to stay pretty still which is useful when we want to see how what we're doing changes the sound and changes the wave. Uh, and if you notice, there's a little bump every now and then. That's just the note re-triggering. There's a little uh, envelope spike. Um, but yeah, so FM synthesis, you, we have um, what are called modulators and carriers. And you can think of a mod a carrier is the thing that produces sound that you hear. Uh, like we have Bart here who is screaming and, and then you producing this beautiful sine wave. Um, and then we have a modulator where we have Homer here shaking his throat backwards and forwards, uh, which will start to do this and change the sound. As we increase the level of the modulator, so in this, this scenario, um, you can see we have, according to this algorithm, uh, I'll explain more about these later, but uh, we have D is a carrier, that's what this C represents, and carriers produce sound. And then we have three modulators, A, B, and C. And A is modulating B, and B is modulating C, and C is modulating D. Uh, and I have turned off A and B, and if I turn off C as well, we'll just have our plain sine wave. Uh, uh, but yeah, as we turn up the modulator, modulator D, uh, C, uh, I'm going to ignore A and B for now, we're just going to look at a simple two operator setup where we have C and D. Uh, D is producing a sine wave. Uh, we can adjust its level. When it's zero, we don't hear anything. As we turn it up, we get more of a sine wave. Uh, if you go beyond 80, it will start to clip, so we're not going to do that. Um, so 80 is the sort of standard full volume. You can go higher, but it will... Going higher makes more sense for modulators than it does for carriers, unless you want it to clip. So yeah, as we turn up the, um, the, carry, uh, the modulator, see, we can see the shape of the waveform starts to change. Almost at this level, it becomes almost a, like a low passed sine wave. We keep going, it gets 
starts to fall in on itself and do we're starting getting these higher frequencies. Basically, it's a multiplication of the base notes frequency. So our operator D in ratio 1 means it's playing whatever note I've entered in the phrase. So D sharp 5. Um, this one will also be oscillating at the same frequency at the moment. But if I lower this down, let's take it all the way down. At zero, it doesn't do anything. Um, a ratio of zero doesn't really mean anything. Like, you can't have a frequency of zero, so I'm guessing it just doesn't play anything. It's like it isn't moving. Frozen, in fact. Um, if we start taking it really slow, it's going to wobble our whole wave back and forwards, which we can't really hear. Um, but once it gets a bit faster, you can hear a bit of a wobble. It's kind of like a vibrato. Now I can stop it and really hear it. And as we go up, uh, 25 will be at two octaves lower. So it's this. It'll be playing the D sharp three. So um, if we look on the spectrum analyzer here. Where's our turn this down? So here's our uh, here's our root note, and then we're getting. Harmonics uh, is uh, one octave lower, and then again uh, two octaves lower. So that's uh, and if we yeah change it away from that, we start to get our harmonics moving around. So at fifty, we'll be one octave lower. Spectrum analyzer thing is kind of useful, but not. You can do it by ear. Um, but the important thing is they become stable at uh, octaves. So 25, 50. You'll see how the waveform is pretty much static. Uh, not so much at that one, but at 50, um, as soon as you go left or right of a stable octave, it starts to move around, and the more you get away from that octave, it will start to wobble more, which you can use to your advantage sometimes. Sometimes you want to want that wobble, and sometimes um, it's exactly what you want. And there are certain other frequencies that will give you other pictures. Uh, terrible thing to say. Uh, but yeah, as we hit one, we'll be back. How it started. We can go beyond one. 1.5. So this is this is actually a perfect fifth above our root note, and it becomes stable too because a perfect fifth is very stable. One octave above our root note. Uh, and we can kind of move the phase backwards and forwards. And if you get it just right, you can pretty much 
wave. And if we turn up the uh, level a bit more, it's pretty much a rounded square wave. Just remember, if you go up by powers of 2, uh, you'll be on octaves. Likewise, 50 is 1 octave down, 25 is 2 octaves down. Um, yeah, so by using uh, this plain sine wave and modulating it with another one at a different frequency or the same frequency, interesting waveforms, which has interesting harmonics and can sort of change over time. And that's where uh, we're going to start to modulate our modulators or operators using uh, the mods. So we can adjust the level of our modulator over time. So rather than it just sounding like this constantly, it gets pretty annoying really fast. We can assign this to uh, love. So we have four modulators, four four mods. I'm going to call them mods, not modulators. There's too many things called modulators. Um, and this is a way how we can assign them to operators. So I'm assigning uh, mod one to C's level. And if I play it now, it's even though this is on 80, we're not going to hear anything. But if I turn this up, we'll hear it. So I'm just using the touch screen to experiment. Um, but we can also then go into the envelope screen and assign mod 1 to an envelope with a short decay. And now we have a sound like this. And I can assign it to both, in which case it's going to be reducing the volume of our carrier as well. I can assign this to a different numbered envelope. And we can have on 2 decaying at a different rate. more intense on our level now without it hurting our ears because it's only for a short moment. So we can get these short sharp harmonic that fade away to a sine wave over time. ratio of our modulator can make it more, I guess, more that sound. I don't know how to describe it, but that FM squelchy sound. But you can play around just a lot by ear. You don't really need spectrum analyzer, you can just hear it. And when you modulate with a lower frequency, you get these really cool bassy, bassy sounds. Like that. It's like a really nice bass pluck kind of effect. Um, and it fades.
fades away into just a sine wave. Um, and as it fades away, it sounds kind of boring when it's a pure sine wave. So what we can do is we can set our minimum level for mod 1 a little higher. So now when our envelope on mod 1 reaches the bottom, it's going to be at 10 instead of uh, 0. So we'll, our harmonics won't completely disappear now. So now it goes pretty much to a perfect sine wave. But now it keeps some of that interesting harmonic as it decays. And play around with the levels to get just the sound you want. It's fairly static at the moment. You can give it a bit of wobble if you just set it a tiny amount. Or on the modulator as well. That sounds cool. And we also have a nice thing on the M8 is we have feedback on every operator, which is kind of rare. A lot of a lot of 4 and 6 operator FM synths only have feedback on one operator. And that means that we can feed an operator back into itself to modulate itself. So it's as if Bart was mod throwing his own neck. Um, so if we just use our single sine wave here, and this one is controlling our feedback. As we increase the feedback, it becomes more of a saw wave, and we get these nice harmonic, saw-like harmonics. And it becomes, yeah, it's not quite a perfect saw, but it's very close. If you go a bit too high, it gets a bit noisy. resonant filter effect. Uh, and also the feedback amount is dependent on the level amount, so if you have a high level, you might want to lower the feedback amount, whereas if you have a low level, you might want a lot of feedback. The other thing we can do is we can also modulate the amount of feedback uh, like this. So assign mod 3 to feedback. So we current, even though it's set to 50, we currently are not getting any feedback on this modulator. Uh, as I turn up mod 3, it's now even when mod 3 is at full, we're getting that full 50 that we specified. So now we can assign this to something here, mod 3, and we'll make it a ramp. Let's go ramp down as well, uh, hold, so we can have a short amount of feedback right at the start, and maybe we'll turn this up even higher. to 
your eye get, get a bit more like noise. So if you turn on a modulator, if you turn feedback way up, it becomes pretty much noise, which can be good for drums and stuff. I always set this to uh, turn it down. try with your FM instruments is you might find they sound very different depending on what note you play. A lot of uh, FM synths do a lot with uh, key tracking to change settings and envelopes depending on the note you play. Uh, the, M8 doesn't let you do that, so unless you, well, you can do it manually, but it doesn't automatically do it. But you can, um, say, change your envelope speed, envelope rates per note, or the modulator amounts per note. Uh, but that takes a lot of effort, and I'm not going to do that here. Um, but yeah, it's good to have a listen to your how your instrument sounds at different uh, pitches. And some of them, yeah, maybe it doesn't work at a high pitch, so you might want to clone it and then make some tweaks to it, separate it into two different instruments, one for low notes and one for high notes or something. Uh, yeah, so that's basically for two operator FM synth. We haven't even touched anything more than that, uh, and I'll talk about algorithm now. So uh, algorithms, um, yeah, so here, this algorithm zero is we have a single single carrier, D, and C is modulated by, D is modulated by C, C is modulated by B, and B is modulated by A. Um, so that lets you get quite complex modulations. It can get a bit chaotic. It can be good for like bass, bassy sounds, I think. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of other options. So this one we have so all the first few are so the first four all have a single carrier, D. And generally, the carriers are on the right and the modulators are on the left. So you can think of the signal going left to right and coming out, the speakers on the right. Um, just like Bart and Homer. And so this one, for example, it's adding A, B, and C together and then their combined output is going to modulate D. Um, and it's probably useful. I haven't played much with that one. Usually, I, it's probably my go-to for like bass C instruments. Um, but yeah, sometimes you want more carriers, which lets you do pretty much two or more notes at the same time. Uh, so this one, they look similar, but the symbols are different. Here we have A is modulating B, B is modulating C, and C is a carrier. Um, and then D is all by itself, and it's just going to be a sine wave, or 
we can change the wave form. But I'm just going to stick to sine waves for now uh, to keep this simple. But yeah, you can switch to different waves if you want to. Um, I'd say most of them don't sound that great, especially as carriers. Uh, but you can get interesting effects with them. Uh, let's see. So let's just go back to a default kind of sound. Um, but yeah, this algorithm 7 is one of my favorites, and it is pretty much what we had before, two, uh, a two operator fm, a carrier with a modulator, and then basically another one exactly the same. So we can have two different notes as carriers, both being modulated. So I'm going to play, uh, using this I can play two sine waves at the same time, at uh, one octave up. And we can see that in the spectrum analyzer. Basically I'm just playing two notes at the same time, two sine waves. Um, and you can do stuff like with phase, um, so that will be cancelling each other out if we do this. Because, yeah, they're just slightly out of phase. Um, which can be interesting, but uh, I guess, yeah, if you're doing... We can do some kind of, like, pulse. Uh, remember earlier we made it what was almost a square wave using um, a ratio of 2, it's pretty much a square wave, and if we do that here as well, and then we can adjust the phase slightly, we can get like a crappy pulse width modulation, not really. But you could do something like that. Um, but yeah, we can do two notes at the same time, and it's more interesting. We can get a sub. And often, usually what I'll do is I'll turn one off at a time and get it, get a nice sound that I like. get the other one sounding good. And then put them on together. So we now have two notes playing that are, this one's an octave lower and has a different different um, waveform, looks like that, and another one that's higher that has this kind of wobbly waveform that looks like that. If we play them together we get this sound, and then we can change their levels over time. And change their modulation over time. So I'm using a single mod slot 3 to control the level of both of the modulators. Um, and if I open that envelope, so that's a ramp down, a fast ramp down. Let's give it a bit longer. This one by itself. It's got a little ping. It's got level two. It's quite slow decay, so that's like our bassy part, and then we've got like a tingly bit at the start. And we can play with these kind of things.
electric piano sound. There's so many different ways to get electric piano sounds. And this is playing a um, perfect fourth below, so it's a I guess a perfect interval, so it sounds quite nice. Uh, the other thing, FM synths sound really good with effects like reverb, and delay, rarely actually use filters with FM synths. Um, you can kind of get, unlike uh, subtractive synths, you can kind of get most of the effects without it, but uh, you can kind of use it as like an EQ if you've got like a, if you find the high-pitched sounds are a bit, a bit too much for your ears, you can use the low pass to cut off some of that, or uh, I guess you could use it. High pass. I never use a high pass. Sometimes band pass or band stop, but often I'll use a low pass to cut off some of the obnoxious high frequencies. Uh, other algorithms. There's a lot of complicated algorithms. Um, so this one's got three three carriers, all with a single common modulator. So modulator A is modulating three different carriers. So you could have three different pitches. Um, let's say we can have the root, an octave up, and an octave below. And they're all going to be modulated by whatever this we set this to. So it's without modulation. See in the spectrum analyzer we have three three octaves, and then I can modulate them all with a single pitch. Uh, 
one of the uh, algorithms I use the most is algorithm B, which is four, four carriers and no frequency modulation. Uh, and let's see, well, it's not really FM at all, but it is super useful. Um, basically lets you get four notes of telephony on a single channel and well you only have eight channels on the M8 but this means you can have uh, four notes four note chords on a single channel uh, which is super handy and you can control them all from the one spot um, so the way I usually set this up is I'll have uh, D as my root and then I'll assign uh, modulation to the other three. So mod 1 is not assigned to anything yet, um, mod 2, 3, and 4 are the pitches of our other notes. So we can create chords, 4 note chords, so we can select a minor 7th chord for example. Actually don't enter them in here. I'll instead do FM1, FM2. So you can put in your chord progression. sound pretty boring as just sine waves uh, so we can add in some feedback to make give a bit more harmonic content and we can assign our remaining mod to control the feedback so on all of these we'll put one onto feedback tutorial hope it's been helpful um, if you've got any questions uh, hop on the discord I'll be around all the time uh, thanks check out the m8 it's awesome <laughs>